guidelines have provided. So um, I've gone through um, all the um, all the project proposals, and uh, I think I've provided feedback either directly in office hours um, or or through uh, through written form uh, via email um, to each of the projects. If you haven't received that from me and you're looking for feedback, please let me know because I did grab those submissions on a certain date. And if someone submitted a part one description after that, uh, I, I may not have had it. So um, what, what that did is gave me an understanding of, of areas where you were working, some relevant models, et cetera, and uh, some of the major things you might um, want to keep in mind in pursuing the project and for which you might want to uh, look out. Um, and uh, this coming, uh, this coming uh, deliverable, uh, which I set for Sunday night, I gave you an extra day because I'm making these comments here on Thursday. Um, uh, I'm looking for additional specificity for those just starting out on projects. For those who are continuing on a project which pre-existed, um, uh, you can, you know, specify a little bit more detail your your coming plans, uh, your immediate priorities. But for those who are starting out a project anew, um, I'm going to be be looking for you to uh, flesh out some additional specifics on that project. And to that end. I have provided um, a bit of an exercise uh, for, for your assistance. And this exercise is not required. Um, I don't require all projects to go through it, nor even all projects starting out to go through it. But um, I'm hoping that it will help you. And, and I, wanna, I wanna show it to you. It's, it's this um, uh, model development exercise, uh, system mapping and scenario selection. So um, what I ask you to go through here is, is to kind of think through, if you're just starting out on a model, you know, what are some of the key outputs from the model? What are, the, what are some of the key assumptions that you're going to be introducing into the model, either in the form of model structure or in the form of quantitative assumptions? Um, what state is there um, and what actions change state and, um, and lead to that you know, state to evolve, um, uh, say for an agent. Uh, and if there are particular rules under which those actions will be active or not, uh, you could specify, specify uh, or you, you could think about those and, and start thinking about, you know, um, characterizing them. Um, another you know, key question would be over what time horizon are you talking about simulating? Uh, the implications are very different from model structure typically if you're talking about a time horizon that's you know a few days, few weeks, few months for epidemiology versus decades. Um, you have to start thinking about you know, population turnover and births and deaths and immigration, et cetera, um, in many models, if you're thinking about a multi-decadal timeframe. Whereas you know, those can be often comfortably ignored for many conditions if you're talking about a couple week or a couple uh, month deadline, uh, month time or time horizon. So you should be thinking, you know, what is the horizon over which I'd like to look? Um, uh, if your goal is um, to, to anticipate, to sort of project forward, sometimes called forecasting, you know, um, it also um, will be important to be clear if you're talking about a two-year time frame or a 20-year or time frame. And if you want to look at intervention, outcomes, you're going to want to think about that. A key need for many models, not all, but for many, is to delineate the interventions that you're thinking about. 
if, if a key goal of your model is to ask, how can we bend the curve? How can we improve this situation with interventions? You're going to be wanting to think about them because they directly impact frequently the design of the model. Um, uh, when you evaluate those interventions, it will be with respect to certain outputs or outcomes of the model. Uh, those interventions will need to uh, attain, uh, undertake their actions, you know, have their actions realized through, their impacts realized through certain mechanisms in the model. They have to impact something in the model so that it ends up rippling through to outcomes. And, you know, I, I speak about generative pathways or causal pathways in language of critical realism, but um, here we are often, you know, thinking about some way that the intervention impacts things and we need some mechanisms uh, for that. Um, and it may be that the intervention needs to be, to take place in certain contexts. So we have isolation for people who have been lab confirmed cases of COVID um, or quarantine for those exposed to those individuals. Or maybe we have um, an interest in targeting our interventions at lower SES neighborhoods uh, for a vaccination related intervention. Whatever it is, um, often context, not always, but often context will play a role. Sometimes it's, you know, people of a certain age category or the whole population. Context, mechanism, outcomes. Again, the three areas emphasized by Pawson and Tilly in the critical realism area and which play a big role in, uh, in planning modeling to think consciously about those if interventions are at the center of your goal. Um, and then, you know, the last few lectures, networks, static or dynamic, um, um, aspects of um, spatial context, you should be thinking about aspects of the environment, the, the surrounds of a given agent that, that may shape that agent. Um, and uh, in that environment will often include interactions with other agents. Um, agent agent interactions, potentially agent environment interactions, um, shedding prions into the environment or polluting the environment or being affected by the pollution or what have you. And you, you wanna think a little bit about what's, uh, what are those features of the environment? Okay, and um, you know, often I'd like to sketch out some elements of models. Um, you know, agent-based models have a less rich uh, language for doing this, but cause loop diagrams can be interesting and it interest or you know of advantageous. But I had described earlier, you might want to have some of them nested in a, a a person shape or an agent shape, and some are more global. Some you might show as interactions between agent types, a service dog and a person or between a person and a physician that they present to this physician for care. Um, you know, sketching these things out, the goal is not, you know, orthopraxy. The goal is not to have it be perfect. The goal is, uh, you know, a perfect depiction, but rather to get your thinking going about how do these things fit together. It's kind of doodling in a way that helps your creative processes think, what do I need in this model? Um, so if, if you were to grapple with that and submit something, you know, some thinking on this, I would be delighted. And most importantly, I, I would have confidence it would advance some of your thinking uh, about the model, or at least you're thinking about what key, key questions need to be resolved about the model, um, about your modeling plans. And of also, also of great significance, it would help me better understand your mindset about what you're thinking and where you're at with your thinking about the model and let me you know, better advise you. But I did have a few other things you could try on for size. That was one of them. Uh, another thing is um, to think about scenarios, you know, like 
often it's useful to start thinking, okay, so suppose I had a model. Um, uh, what would I do with it? Like what, what scenarios would I be interested in? What, um, what questions would I, would I ask of it? Um, and uh, sometimes thinking through those scenarios gets you to start thinking about these things. You start to think, oh, well, what would I see from a scenario? Oh, be certain outcomes. What outcomes would those be? Um, oh, the scenarios relate to, in, to what if questions. Um, maybe some of them are interventions and some are just broader what if questions if the economy tanks or you know there's a big wave of COVID that sweeps in this this winter or um, if um, if there's an expansion and you know the ability of the NHS to offer long COVID care or something like that what if questions that are not interventions perhaps they're not so much under the control of parties you might inform with this intervention but are things to which you might want to respond so sometimes it can be useful to to go through interventions in your mind and that will get you again often thinking about some aspects uh up up here that are more outwards facing of the model um and you know i suggest in as much as you're thinking about assumptions for the model some of them may be assumptions about parameter values, specific values we we um, allocate to particular particular assumptions about the model, the contact rate, or the how long someone remains isolated before isolation finishes, right? Um, or uh, the number of days that someone goes with um, before developing symptoms um, uh, that can be tested with, with uh, I should have it here, um, with uh, these sort of swabs and so on. Um, so maybe you want to uh, you know, be thinking about those quantitative assumptions, but also maybe you wanna be thinking about structural assumptions. And often what we do when we work with a model, we we conduct sensitivity analyses because our models results are in some sense almost, you know, they're, they're almost invariably contingent on our assumptions. I can't think of a single model I've ever worked with, which, you know, doesn't have some assumption in it. And, and those results therefore reflect those assumptions. And so um, to learn from the model, um, but also to understand our, uh, the, the, the contingent nature of our understanding, uh, the, the limitations of our understanding, the fragility of our understanding. Um, you know, typically you conduct sensitivity analyses and, and that builds your sense of what parameters, to what assumptions the model's outcomes are highly sensitive and to which they're less sensitive. A 10% difference in one parameter make may make almost no difference in the outcomes you're interested in, given kind of the, 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 the state that the model's in, whereas a 10% difference in another may make a huge difference. It's of the character of nonlinear models and models whose evolution depends on current state that the sensitivity could depend on the current state uh, in, in ways that lead to markedly different sensitivity. Um, and this matters. It matters because um, it may be much more important in a, for, in order for us to tie down our uncertainty to invest in collecting data regarding quantities, regarding model assumptions, particular parameter assumptions, to which it exhibits big, big, large sensitivity, high sensitivity. Um, I apologize because my my um, illness adult condition here is leading English to be um, poorly wielded by me at current. But um, I hope I hope my uh, my communication is uh, clear, despite my my uh, verbal limitations. Um, uh, so. 
these are um, these are three exercises that I um, uh, I presented to you um, uh, in hopes that they might be helpful for your next stage of the project for for Sunday night submission. Just to start thinking these things through and get us again synced up with where you're at. If you are super uncertain about these things, just just you know struggle with it, um, try it, and then let me know that you're a bit lost with this. And one of the highest priorities for me next week will be getting together with you so we can talk and and um, I can give you some extra assistance. Um, it could involve a bit of mentorship um, uh, from me or from others. Uh, so. Uh, I'm I'm hoping this will aid you in in taking that next step. What I'd be looking for there for those just starting out is is more specificity on some of these items. Um, and if you could give me responses on any of these that are thoughtful, I would be happy if you could do a couple of them, two or three. I mean that would be awesome. Um, but if you want, if you've already started something in, in form of a, of a model and that logo or any logic or another form, and you want to, you know, you want to comment on that and show it to me, um, I'm happy to look at that and would be glad to, to comment on it. Um, that would also advance my understanding. Okay, so those are some comments on um, project part two submission, which again is Sunday night. Any questions from people before I jump in to the next major topic I wanted to talk about today? Um, I have the luxury of being able to look at the chat here. So any, any questions from folks? I also welcome voices. I will. Uh, yes, uh, Maurice. 